Welcome to this special Code Breakers today, and thank you for joining us. My name is Donna Clement Petrushka, and I am Kim Clement's daughter. There are so many of you who have only recently learned who my dad was, and many who have followed and supported this ministry for so many years, decades even. With the increasing pressure on the current administration, which has culminated now to the point of an impeachment inquiry via the Democratic-controlled Congress, I find it crucial to share with you what God showed my dad years and years ago. In 2007, from Redding, California, my dad prophesied this. This that shall take place shall be the most unusual thing, a transfiguration, a going into the marketplace, if you wish, into the news media, where Time Magazine will have no choice but to say what I want them to say. Newsweek, what I want to say. The View, what I want to say. Trump shall become a trumpet, says the Lord. No, you didn't hear me. Trump shall become a trumpet. Are you listening to me? I will raise up the Trump to become a trumpet. The prophecy you just saw was the first in a long list of prophecies that God revealed to my dad, Kim Clement, regarding Donald Trump becoming president. We have seen those prophecies fulfilled, even in regard to news outlets and television shows who are under more and more scrutiny to report honestly and fairly. But there was one particular day in 2014, prior to the 2016 presidential candidates announcing that they would be running for president. The date was February 22, 2014. And on that day, my dad, Kim Clements, saw with unbelievable precision and accuracy what would happen in the 2016 presidential election and beyond that. I want to show you some clips from that day now. Hear me, for I have found a man after my own heart. I have found a man after my own heart and he is amongst He is one of the brothers but singled out for presidency of the United States of America. And then I heard gold. I wasn't sure if this was attached to his name, but he said to me, he will restore the fortunes in this nation. Bef because of his brilliance, I couldn't quite see his face because that was not allowed because there was a mist that covered all the people and he was amongst them. And the Spirit of God made me look at him and he said, this man will throttle the enemies of Israel. This man will throttle the enemies of the West. And they are highly embarrassing moments that are about to occur for many many politicians in this nation there will be a shaking amongst there will be a shaking amongst the de democrats in the upcoming elections but unsettling for the republicans why is why is god doing this for god said i am dissatisfied with what emerges from both parties. And then there is a nation he showed me and took me, itching for a new kind of war with America. They will shout, impeach, impeach, they say. But nay. This nation shall come very subtly. But he shall not come in the time of President Obama. We have seen Donald Trump become president. We know that his trademark color is gold. And we know that our economy has flourished under his presidency. 
For anyone who hasn't seen all of the Trump prophecies, I will be bringing them to you soon. I recently posted a video containing all of these prophecies on my personal YouTube channel, and it was immediately censored and deemed inappropriate. If you want to see it, search for my page, Don A. Clement Petrushka, on YouTube and watch it. I've also posted a link to this video on our Facebook pages, and it will soon be up on the official Kim Clement YouTube channel and the new House of Destiny YouTube channel. But from what we just saw in the prophecy from February of 2014, also refers to President Trump standing firmly with Israel even moving the embassy to Jerusalem. And I was there in Israel the day this was officially done. But today, I wanna to focus on the subject of impeachment. As you just heard, God showed my dad that there would be highly embarrassing moments for many politicians in America, in both parties. We've certainly seen that since the last election cycle. But most remarkable is the fact that God showed my dad how they would shout, impeach, impeach, but nay? Now, nay is not a word I ever heard my father use. So this indicates to me the language used when there is a vote within the House or the Senate, anything like that, they'll say yay or nay. The reference to a nation itching for a new kind of war with America appears to be a cyber war at this stage, but I always watch and wait before definitively presenting anything as fact. We do know that the phone call between the new Ukrainian president and President Trump contained a discussion about corruption in the 2016 election where hacking and cyber activity was involved. So let's hear what else God showed my dad that day and pay careful attention to his reference to Ukraine, a country God had my dad put his boots on the ground later that same year, 2014. And I have now kindled a fire in Zion. I have kindled a fire in Zion, in America, in nations throughout the earth, and my fist is about to smack down on Russia. Out of the rebellion, turn me up just a little. Out of the rebellion of the Ukraine, which was seen by my prophet, shall come out of those ashes beauty, shall come out of that sadness joy, shall come out of those garments praise, says the Lord. I have searched for a man and a woman who would stand in the Oval Office and pray and call for the restoration of the fortunes of Zion. What stood out the most to me in this part of the prophecy is that my dad referred first to Russia and then to Ukraine. We all know the issues surrounding Russia and Ukraine, but also knowing that prophecy is a glimpse into the future and looking through a glass darkly because we prophesy in part, I recognize something that may not be obvious, but it did stand out to me. We have seen over the past two years a very long investigation into President Trump and allegations that he was involved in Russian collusion, until there was no evidence of said collusion, at which time charges shifted to obstruction. Regardless, this investigation ended with no concrete evidence that the Trump administration colluded with Russia or obstructed anything, particularly because the White House and administration cooperated with all demands regarding that investigation. Not long after the conclusion of the Mueller report and investigation, it appears that the fist was smacked down on the Russian collusion allegations. Notice that the very next part of the prophecy refers to Ukraine, and we are now watching an impeachment inquiry revolving around a phone call in Ukraine. So in the prophecy, God said his fist would smack down on Russia, but out of Ukraine would come beauty from ashes, joy out of sadness, and garments of praise. Could this be a glimpse as to the order in which these endless investigations have gone and how they will end up? A person who keeps coming up is Rudy Giuliani, who was first mentioned by the Ukrainian president on the call with President Trump. Now, the transcript of this call was recently released to the public, declassified and unredacted, something that has never been done before. If you haven't read it, I encourage you to do so. It's available online. 
But right in the middle of all the controversy surrounding this call is Rudy Giuliani, personal lawyer to the president and former mayor of New York. Now, I remember well seeing then Mayor Giuliani in the streets of New York on 9-11, covered in dust and debris, trying to help the people on the ground as the city and our country endured the worst attack on American soil in the history of the United States. My dad prophesied 9-11 from Dearborn, Michigan in 1996. Now, on February 21st, 2015, almost a year to the day after the 2014 prophecy where God showed my dad so much, including the cries for impeachment, my dad said this about Rudy Giuliani. And during that time, great prophets shall arise from the earth and they shall stand and reveal. These are not prophets that are necessarily in the religious organizations, but prophets like I chose, Netanyahu, Rudy Giuliani. Oh, you may mock him, but I made him a watchman in this country. Now, watch what he prophesied about Giuliani on the same day that he prophesied that Trump would become a trumpet in Redding, California in 2007. For God said, I am breezing. I am breezing upon the people of this nation. I am breathing upon the churches that are going down and I'm bringing them up, says the Spirit of God. I am breathing upon the political powers that be. For God said, I will not forget 9-11. I will not forget what took place that day. And I will not forget the gatekeeper that watched over New York who will once again stand and watch over this nation, says the Spirit of God. I find these connections to be remarkable, especially considering how long ago God showed these details to my dad in glimpses that we can now look at through spiritual eyes and in seeking the will of God over man. I encourage all of you to guard yourself against the influence of news media and talking heads with so many opinions and falsehoods that cause a haze and confusion to fall on the people. Let us pray for our leaders and seek not our will, but God's will to be done in all of this. I urge House leadership, many of my colleagues, to take action to impeach this lawless president today. I rise to announce that on next week, Mr. Speaker, I will bring a privileged resolution before the Congress of the United States of America. I will stand here in the well of the Congress and I will call for the impeachment of the President of the United States of America. There'll be discussion as to whether when we draft or when the judiciary uh, examines the question on filing potential articles of impeachment. When she announced a formal impeachment inquiry into the president today, she listed off the six committees that have been investigating the president already. And how do you feel about Nancy Pelosi and the House Democrats moving forward with Trump's impeachment finally? At last. At last. Look, we've been pushing on this for two years. The speaker has moved very decisively. She now knows that she has the support of most of the caucus and she has formalized the impeachment inquiry and I support that. Uh, I think that compels us uh, to travel down the road towards impeachment so I fully support the speaker's decision. Before we go, I want to show you another clip from February 22nd of 2014 where my dad prophesied about impeachment a second time on the same day. They will shout, impeach, impeach, but this shall not happen. And then God says, highly embarrassing moments when another Snowden arises. And people will become very afraid. They'll say, we have no protection. And then God says, am I impressed with your weapons of war? Am I impressed with the strength of your men's legs? Ha! I have said I will bring this nation to its knees. And God said you have been humbled. And yet some more. And then you shall hear the sounds of great victory. For where are the people gathered? Where are my people gathered? Where is the sound of unity from my people? Get ready to hear the sounds of great victory. Thank you for joining me today for this Code Breakers special report. Regardless of your political leanings, your personal opinions, or things you've seen, read, or heard, 
One thing is certain, God warned us in advance of the things that would happen in this season. As Christians, we are responsible to pray and behave as Christ would have us do. We are living in an historical time and we as the people of Christ have a responsibility to do what God wants above the desires of man and the tricks of the enemy to cripple us. We are the warriors. We are prophetic people and we will stand firm and in unity as the world around us is so divided, chaotic and unhinged. I say God's got this, have faith in Him. I also want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have continued to give to the House of Destiny Network as we have gone through so much. It's because of your obedience that I'm able to bring this Code Breakers to you today. It's because of your obedience and sacrifice that we are able to continue to build on the foundation that took 40 years of labor, obedience, sacrifice, and the desire to fulfill God's will. And a big thank you to those of you who email and message me regularly with information on many things, including my dad's prophecies. I couldn't do this without you. And I also just want to take a chance to say happy birthday to my dad. He went to be with the Lord almost three years ago, and it would have been his 63rd birthday this last week. But I know that he watches amongst the cloud of witnesses now, and I'm so proud to be able to show what God did through him in his time here on earth. So stay tuned to our broadcast every Saturday and Wednesday, and don't miss out on the channels under our network. We have the Israel Update channel at israelupdate.org with a new broadcast every Friday. And don't miss Prophetic Rewind this Monday at kim.tv because the teaching and prophecy is the word for us now. Also, I want to hear from you. Please feel free to email me at codebreakers at houseofdestiny.org or message me via Facebook and Instagram. We have all those pages. We also have YouTube channels, and make sure you like, follow, and get our notifications on any or all of those platforms. I can't wait to hear from you because your voice matters. And keep watching because we plan to launch new channels under the House of Destiny Network soon. Thank you again for joining us today. And keep a lookout for more Code Breakers because I have much more to share with you in the coming weeks and months as so much of what God revealed to us in advance is happening right now. So God bless each and every one of you. Now let's get back to our broadcast. Hello, House of Destiny family, and welcome to today's broadcast. We are so excited that you've decided to join us. If this is your first time, we pray that it's not your last and that your experience far outweighs your expectations. We want you to experience the presence and love of God like never before. If you want more information on who we are and what we're all about, make sure to click the join link at the top of your screen now and our team would love to connect with you. I want to give you an update on one of our boots on the ground missions in Uganda. We partner with Love Without Boundaries on the ground in Uganda and what they are doing is absolutely fantastic and truly heartwarming. It makes me overjoyed to know that you and I have had such a big part in all these beautiful stories of hope. As you may know, Love Without Boundaries is well versed with the ins and outs of foster care in China as they began foster care there in 2004. It would seem that setting up foster care in one country would be quite similar to setting it up in another country. While the general idea is the same, the cultural differences and expectations are many. One of the most significant differences between China and Uganda is the availability of families to foster. Because of the long-standing one-child policy in China, there are many parents and grandparents who once their one child or grandchild grow up and leave home, they're left with empty arms, time to spare, and love to give. In Uganda, this is not the case, as it is common for several generations to live in one home and the care of all the children often falls on the matriarch. Sometimes this results in elders caring for both their children and their great-grandchildren. Given this situation, there is not an overwhelming number of empty arms or an overwhelming amount of time to spare. The Mukono Foster Care Program is located in Uganda and is now about 18 months old and there are currently 12 children living with foster families. Ken Naganda, one of the directors of the Mukono Baby Room, stated that not one family in Uganda has not been affected by the devastation of HIV. While the cultural challenges are many, we are moving forward knowing that the advantages are greater. 
Children placed in families have more opportunities for one-on-one -on -one interaction with their foster parents and siblings, allowing for bonding to take place. They also have the opportunity to attend school and most importantly, they get to experience the love of a family. When our representatives, Christina and Courtney, visited the McConnell Baby Room in February, they met Jacob and Cleo. Both of these children were long-term residents of the baby home. Knowing that both of these children were ready to start school, Kathy began exploring long-term options for Jacob and Cleo. In May, these two went to what was supposed to be one of several introductory visits to their new foster home. They loved it so much that they decided to stay and return to the baby home only for a farewell celebration and to say their goodbyes. Jacob and Cleo now have a mom, a dad, and even a brother. They are attending school, participating in family chores, and really enjoy attending church with their family. Both children are doing well in school, and Jacob recently asked when they would be able to meet their foster grandparents. It is so wonderful that these two now know the love of a family. Amazing. I know I'm touched when I hear these incredible stories of children finally knowing what it is like to feel love, maybe even for the first time. How incredible it is that we have an opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus by just becoming a partner. If you are desiring to invest in a cause bigger than yourself, I encourage you to join us in our Boots on the Ground partnership and continue to be updated on what your seeds of love are doing. It only takes a few minutes to change someone's life for eternity. Become a Boots on the Ground partner today. Click the partner link at the top of the page. What a great, great birthday tribute day it is for our dear prophet. And what a great time for us to share as a family together. God believes in the family and we need family, especially in these tumultuous, tumultuous times that, that we're living in. And uh, aren't you glad that Jesus is our cornerstone, that he's our rock, and that he is our firm foundation, that our lives are built on this unshakable uh, kingdom, this unshakable person in Jesus Christ. And when I think of Kim, there are so many reasons uh, why we celebrate him. There are so many reasons why people loved him. And I think one of the biggest things that uh, comes to mind for us is his amazing ability to hear so clearly the voice of God. You know, that's such a great privilege for all of us to, to know God and to be able to hear from God. And a prophet has a very special call upon his life. And Kim being a great prophet, but standing out so much from, from the prophets because of his clear, clear word that he of knowledge that he had from God. And I, I said all that, you know, to say that, of course, he prophesied that, uh, you know, there would, there would be no impeachment. And he prophesied so many things that are so relevant to this very hour and moment that we're living in. And I just think of Matthew 24, verse 35, where Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. I have so much assurance. I have so much confidence today in a world that's rocking and rolling and, and shaking and, you know, there is no certainty when you turn on the news. You know, who do you believe? But it is so powerfully amazing for those that know their God, how confident and how much hope and how much peace we have in our hearts and lives. It's not made up. We're not talking about a rabbit's foot, make believe. We're talking about the rock, the faith that we have in the rock Christ Jesus. 
Also, I think about Kim's sure words of prophecy. Why? Because he was prophesying after the, the greatest prophet, Jesus Christ. And he was seeing and he was hearing the word of God. And God said concerning his word out of Isaiah 55, so shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall, it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out. Now look at this. Because you have the prophetic word of God in these times that we're living in, because we have the word of God, he says, we will go out with not depression, discouragement, questions, and you know, doom and gloom hanging over our heads. You will go out with joy and you will be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before us. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree and it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Do you see what follows the true child of God? Even when there's controversies and squabbling and bickering and fighting between parties and, you know, crazy things going on in our nation's capital, in our government, in our world, in our nation. You know, Romans 12 says, don't conform to the pattern of this world. Jesus said in John 16, in the world you will have trouble. 1 John 2 says the world and its desires are passing away, but the things of God will last forever. He also said in 1 John 5, everyone born of God overcomes this world. And then in 2 Peter, finally it says, because of God's promises, because of God's prophecies, because of his word, we escape the corruption of this world. We're surrounded by corruption. We're in it, but we are not of it. Makes me happy, makes me exciting. I just wanna exhort you today according to the word of God, the promise of God, regardless of the moment that we're living in, but actually for us, for this moment is beautiful. It's a joyous moment. It's a moment where the, even the trees are shouting and clapping. Because even creation knows there's hope in God. What are we supposed to be like, church, in this hour? We're supposed to walk in love and unity. Ephesians chapter number four. Verse one says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of your calling to which you have been called with humility, gentleness, patience. Is that the way you feel after you watch the news? No, you're tempted not to feel that way. Bearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace. That's because you know this world is not your home. God loves the world, yes he does, and we love the people in this world, even though we don't always like one another. But we have to see with the eye of faith. And I'm gonna conclude on what is the most important thing in our lives in this crazy world that we're living in? What are we really supposed to look to? What is the goal that we're supposed to seek after? What is the hope that God wants us to, uh, wants to anchor our soul with? It's, it's regarding, it's about our relationships. Number one, I have hope today. I'm anchored today because of my relationship with the God who says my word will come to pass in your life and in this world. 
And number two, I realize the preciousness of family, that it, our existence and our time in this earth isn't about things and stuff and political parties and gold and silver and our profession and you know our bottom line, our savings accounts and all the stuff that surrounds us. I was telling my wife the other day, we had a birthday party again and all of our family was gathered together and I was just looking at my precious kids and grandchildren and I realized this is all I have. They're all I have. I could have a zillion dollars in the bank, but what good would that do me? Yeah, money helps, of course. <laughs> but ultimately, it's all going to burn. It's not going to last. It's all temporal, except for these little humans in my life. They're eternal. They have eternal spirits. And keep your soul grounded with all the chaos of this world and everything that people are saying they're gonna do and they wanna do, and whether it's against us or against our president or against our churches, we have a family and let's strive to stay connected and united. And your precious family that God has given to you, realize that they're all that you have and that you have been blessed and graced in such a generous way by the Spirit of the Lord. And that God has given us not only our families, but He's given us friends and He's given us other people to influence, to be influenced by, yes, in a godly way, but to influence in a godly way, to win the souls of men to Jesus Christ. I wanna pray with you right now. God wants to comfort you right now. God wants to give you peace. God wants to strengthen you and your family. God doesn't want you to look to what you don't have, but to look at what you do have. You have something from God and embrace it and thank Him for it. And then finally, as I'm praying with you, and I've shared this many, many, many times over in the past, one dear family that really represents so many families in our family, the church, the House of Destiny, has recently lost a young boy teenage boy through, through incurable sickness. And um, as I'm praying with you, we want to remember Cynthia and her son and her other grandson who in fact is sick as well. It's a sad situation, but there's always hope in God. There's true hope in God. So Lord, we pray right now. We thank you, Lord that in, though we have tribulation in this world, Jesus said, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. And Lord, right now, give your people joy, give your people strength, give your people the encouragement that they need and the hope that does not make ashamed. And Lord, bless our dear friend, Cynthia and her son, Luigi and her other grandchild, Loki, and Lord, they're going through such grief right now. But Father, you're the one who raises up our lives out of the ashes and where there seems there's so much sadness and where there seems like there will never come hope, you bring forth hope out of those valleys. It's never too late. Things never get so bad that you will not triumph in God because you will triumph in God. And I, we want to leave you with that today. And we want to celebrate Jesus today and Jesus in you. Be blessed, be encouraged, be filled, and be back with us because God has so much more. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you soon. Thank you for watching the House of Destiny's YouTube channel. Please subscribe to get all of our latest content. 
This video was brought to you by all of our generous supporters. If you'd like to give, click the link in the description. We have new episodes every week, so stay tuned. And remember, you're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now.